All right. So now this video is going to introduce you to the course policies of the lab portion of the course. Um, the course policies of the lecture portion of the course were covered in a previous video located under the syllabus page on Canvas, right? So go to course introduction, find the syllabus page. That'll introduce you, to, introduce you to the lecture portion of the course. This is going to focus on policies surrounding the lab portion of the course, okay? Um, so just to give you an idea of uh, what's going to happen in the lab component of this course. Every week you're going to come in. We have a lab period scheduled every week. You're gonna come in and we're either gonna do a worksheet, which is really sort of to bone up certain difficult concepts that are covered in the lecture portion of the course, doing group work and other sort of stuff to help you guys figure out those difficult concepts, uh, get them nailed down. And the other thing, the big part of the lab component of the course is those hands-on laboratory experiments, okay? Um, I had, you know, same sort of thing as I discussed before. There are these various resources available to you. First of all, me in my Zoom office hours and in-person office hours, as well as GRASP on Fridays, the tutorial center, and then a late addition to the course, so it's not here, is our ETC leader who can help you out with both lecture and lab material. Uh, my contact information, and again, just as I said before, you can always contact me via email. If you can't, I can't answer your question there, we can hop on Zoom real quick. Uh, I will make myself available to you guys for any and all questions that you guys have, okay? Whoops. Um, Importantly, let's get to, well, so first of all, in terms of the required materials for this course, really what you need is a lab notebook. Okay. There's one available to you at the bookstore that's kind of a fancy one and that has a periodic table and graph paper and all that sort of stuff. You can just have a simple composition notebook or a simple spiral notebook. The point being is that it has to be something that's dedicated to your chemistry lab. Your lecture material can't be in there as well because I'm going to hold on to it sometimes. Right? So bottom line is you have to have some sort of thing, a spiral notebook, composition notebook, a fancy lab notebook, I don't really care, but something that's dedicated to your Chem 3A lab. All right? uh, I went over the excused absences policy in the previous video, so you might want to watch that if you, um, you know, didn't hear me go over it in person, uh, or you can read through it here. The bottom line is that this, you need to meet these four requirements to constitute an excused absence. All right, so now let's get into what happens if you miss lab. So first of all, if you're a no call, no show to lab, you're going to get a zero for whatever's going on that day, whether it's a lab experiment or a worksheet. All right, attendance to lab is mandatory. If a worksheet day is missed due to an excused absence, um, you need to make it up before some sort of a due date, usually a week after it was assigned. Uh, for your first worksheet that you miss, I'll allow you to do it at home, okay? If more than one worksheet is missed, then you're going to need to do it in some sort of a proctored environment. So, for example, uh, in, with, in my office hours with me, in some sort of time outside of office hours with me, we can negotiate a proctor for the, with the tutorial center. The bottom line is I treat these worksheets to be more like quizzes. They're in-class assignments. So, again, I'll allow you to do one at home. After that, you're going to have to do it in a proctored environment. Okay. Now, most of you in this course, not everybody, but many students in this course, and actually the majority of students in this course are nursing majors or pre-dental or um, allied health or something like that. This course is a prereq uh, for these hands-on kind of medical science fields because we have this laboratory component. Okay, so these hands-on laboratory experiments are a required part of this course. And in particular, the CID guidelines or, you know, the guidelines that govern California community colleges state that you must complete a minimum of eight of those in-person laboratory experiments to pass this course. If you don't complete eight of them, you can't pass the course. Okay. Um, yeah, and that's just because then we, we can't say that you've actually met the requirements for 3A. You just simply haven't had enough hands-on laboratory experience. So now let's look at our lab schedule here. You'll notice that the worksheets are sort of named worksheet. All of those hands-on laboratory experiments are in bold here. 
So you can see that there's 10 hands-on experiments that we're going to be completing this semester. Again, you must complete a minimum of eight of them in order to pass the course. If you miss, so that means that you can miss two and still pass the course. If you miss three of them, you cannot pass Chem 3A. Okay, uh, lab experiments will be 25 points. That includes both pre and post lab assignments. And then those worksheets that we do sometimes, those will be about 20 points each. Um, okay, so then what happens if you miss a lab experiment? So we talked about worksheets, right? If you miss a worksheet, you can complete one at home. Other than that, we're gonna have to find you a proctored environment to do it. The laboratory experiments cannot be made up. We don't have any extra days in the semester that I can do any sort of makeup periods um, just because of how a spring semester is, is structured. So instead, your lowest two scoring labs you know, these are these hands-on experiments will be dropped at the end of the semester. So if you miss an experiment day, you're going to get a zero for that experiment, but I'm going to drop your two lowest scoring experiments at the end of the semester. Again, you got to complete that minimum of eight. All right, and that's pretty much it. Uh, plagiarism is a big thing with regard to lab reports. So again, just as I had stated in the previous video, and I want to restate again, um, Cheating has exploded ever since we went online, and we are not going to tolerate it. If we found that you've had been cheating or plagiarized or anything like that, we're going to come down on you with the full force that we can. Okay. Just to go over the Canvas page real quick, some things that need to be completed for the course introduction of, or for the introduction of the lab component of the course. First of all, you can re review the lab schedule here. Um, throughout the semester, this is what will be updated. This the schedule on in the syllabus won't be touched after this point. We're not allowed to update the syllabus, so if there are any changes to the lab schedule, it will be done on this page here. And what you need to complete for me by the end of this week is the COVID, read through the COVID-19 protocols and take the COVID-19 protocol quiz. You need to watch this laboratory safety video and take the laboratory safety quiz. And then finally saw, sign the safety contract uh, down here.